eye on Tordoff and Simeon Kirkland for HBU and New Orleans face off, and the Privateers win the opening tap, and we'll see defense that looks like is trying to match up in the zone here early, Coach. Yeah, well, what Coach Cotter will do, he'll change his defenses quite a bit. He might show a 1-1-3 one, one, uh, zone, which ends up in a 2-3 matchup. That's basically what he's running now, but he also will run junk defense. St. Hilaire misses the baseline jumper, and then Kirkland brought the ball down and had it stripped with a chance for a putback. HBU the other way in a hurry into the post Hoffman to the corner to Bryson Long, their best spot-up shooter. And now Christian Corsalt, who's worked his way into the starting lineup, a transfer out of Nevada has it, out of the double team, the Long. Against UNO man defense, the privateers mostly stay in the man-to-man -man in the half court. Corsalt with the shot clock down to six, passes off the Long. Lee will launch a bomb for three that's off the glass. Would have been a shot clock violation, but St. Hilaire able to grab it and bring it across the timeline. Tyson Jackson up top. Right wing to the point guard. Sackew slices through the defense but misses the layup. Rebound off the floor by Lee up ahead long. Thought about pulling the trigger on the pull-up and didn't. Gets it back from Tordoff. In the post, here is Lee matching up with the 6-3 Green. 6-6 Lee jump hook won't go. And Green able to clear it for the privateers. Quickly they go the other way, New Orleans. Pull up jumper at the free throw line. Good for the first points for Troy Green. Both teams are transition teams. And you've got to be able to finish that transition play, but there's going to be a five-man effort uh, by both teams, and you've got to have stop defense with your transition defense. New Orleans, until their loss this weekend, was first in the league in percentage allowed and percentage shooting on both ends. Now in the post, Tordoff doesn't want anything to do with it, passes out. Corsault with it. Again, the shot clock running down on the Huskies. As the big man Jackson at 6'9", chasing Corsault, forcing an air ball. Oh. Two excellent half-court defensive possessions yeah. for the home team. Well, you know, this is the time of year. It's March Madness or March Sadness. And you've got to be able to make your stops on the defensive end. They've done two possessions of really good defense. And bouncing back from struggling on the ball on the perimeter and two road losses last week early on for UNO here. Trying to reestablish their identity against the zone. St. Hilaire passes up the corner three, pulls up for the jumper from 18. Too strong and chased down by Long. Ahead to Lee. Green took the wrong angle and paid the price and won off the glass and in for Darius Lee. On that last possession, an offensive possession by UNO, they overloaded the zone. Uh, they didn't finish the play with a bucket. And the HBU was very, very good at recognizing uh, and opening in the transition game, Lee ended up getting a bucket and possibly an and one. Their bulky bigs, we'll call them, like Lee and Hoffman. Don't mind getting up and down the floor. And Lee, an excellent scorer at 17 a game, makes the free throw. He's 80% from the line and gives his team a 3-2 to two lead at the 17-33 mark. And they'll show pressure in the backcourt to the privateers. HBU normally will press after a free throw and they're very good at getting steals from that press. Quick hands with the deflection out of bounds by Corsalt. And yeah, this is a league that's up-tempo, so if you can turn people over to get your running game going, all the better, and that's why HBU has done better than expected. It predicted seventh in the league standings. They could finish fourth. Now a foul called on the perimeter. Corsalt with the push, and the first team foul going against HBU here at the 17-20 mark. From HBU, though, they're very good in, in the press. They're averaging about eight steals a ball game just from the pressure defense. They're one of the better pressing teams in the conference. Cross court, it goes from Simeon Kirkland to Derek St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire creating space on the dribble. Fade away three, though, off target. It goes right to Jackson, and the pain is put back with the left hand is good. Good. I like that collision at the rim. When Jackson can stick his nose and come back and come up with an offensive rebound, that's just what the privateers need. Jackson, who's shooting very well from the field, 65% in league play with the easy bucket on the putback there to give UNO the 4-3 lead. Privateers again pressuring all over on the perimeter. Here is Lee trying to get by Green, can't do it. Dump off to Long. Back to Lee, back to the bucket, up top, Corsalt contested three, rattles out and goes in from 24. Yeah, Corsalt is a really good basketball player. He's more of a straight line driver, 
you got to wall him up or contest every jump shot on the perimeter. Kirkland trying the wraparound bounce pass for Jackson, knocked out of bounds on the baseline. And Corsall came off the bench in UNO's road win at HBU and hit three second half threes to make it a tight ball game before St. Hilaire with his 34 points was able to put it away for the privateers. That a long time ago though. And these two teams have both grown since then, including Kamani Dowdy, the third year freshman out of Brooklyn and New York making his first appearance. He's been the best scorer off of New Orleans' bench. Yeah, when you can go to Stouffer Gym and get a win on the road, uh, that's a pretty impressive win because that's a tough place to play. Across the court it goes to St. Lair, tries to penetrate, challenged and wow. able to chest to chest score it over Tordoff for his first two to tie things at six, four minutes into the contest. Yeah, it was great body control by St. Lair, uh, but he's got to continue to attack keep the defense on the heel. Lee now matched up with Dowdy, finds Long in the corner cross court, didn't pull the trigger. They reverse it, Corsalt will try another three ball. This won't drop. Out of the reach of Tordoff, rebound Kirkland. Quickly St. Hilaire into the front court. Going at Corsalt here to the rim, but misses the runner from point blank range and Tordoff clears it for the Huskies. Yeah, that's a good hands up play by the defense, which forced St. Hilaire to take a difficult uh, shot in transition. Corsalt finding Sam Hoffman open for three and a pretty good three-point shooter at 37%. Had all the time in the world to line that up and give his team a 9-6 to six advantage nearing the 15-minute mark of this first half. Now cross court with it. Daniel Sackey, the Valpo transfer, back over to St. Hilaire, dribbles inside the arc, tries to bank it in too strong. The rebound for Lee, who can take it himself and look to attack as he crosses the timeline with 14.50 to go and his team up nine to six. Corsalt left open, top of the key three. He misses, but Hoffman with the box give HBU a three-point advantage. Now the native of Belgium shooting two, first one up and gets a friendly roll. Their third leading score at over eight points per game, coming in at 68% from the line. HBU coach having success with their zone early. Yeah, they are matching up. Uh, they're doing a good job in their rotations. They plug in every gap. So you just got to try to get into those gaps, dribble that, take that ball side to side, and try to exploit them as much as possible. And on. Zaki with one of those unforced errors after the second free throw was in charging into the front court and lost control of it yeah. and turned it over. Yeah, well, you know what he's capable of doing in transition, though. He's going to push it, and you've got to be able to stop that. But he forces the wings the field lanes, and you can get a five-man push, you got a chance to score against HBU. Jade C in off the bench, a point guard that started against UNO in the first matchup and had a really good game as it's knocked away out of bounds by the Privateers. 15 points for him in that one with three assists in 34 minutes, but now coming off the bench with Corsalt in the starting lineup since last we saw HBU over in Houston. Here's a handoff to Long and now cross court to C. Stops inside the arc, goes cross court. Now Hoffman challenged for three, but hit it right in Dowdy's face. They're not a great three-point shooting team. Neither of these teams are, but Hoffman is good and he's hit two and they're up 14 to six. Yeah, you can't let them set. Uh, you got to raise up. There's got to be shot pressure and give them a, a little bit of a target to shoot over. Inside out, a chance for three for Saki, who misses off back rim. Another rebound for the Huskies and Hoffman. See the other way with it. HBU looking perhaps to take a double digit early lead. 14 minute mark gone at the lakefront. Now yeah. Lee matched up with Jamel Myers, the fourth year junior for New Orleans out of Cape Coral, Florida. A versatile UNO defender to give Troy Green a break defensively. Goes down low and throws it away off the foot of a teammate, toward off and picked up by UNO and Kirkland. Other way, St. Hilaire, nowhere to go, lost the basketball, and Lee comes up with it with a chance to run with numbers, three on two. Passes to the fourth man, the trailer, tore it off, misses the scoop layup. Tap, follow, Lee won't go. Try to put it up again and couldn't get it in, and New Orleans finally clears it. This all part of March Madness, though. Both teams are playing really hard. Uh, you've got to be able to battle, knowing that you've got a sustained effort the entire time you're all on the court, you can't take plays off. Kirkland out and Jackson back in for the Privateers. The latter big man Jackson's been battling back spasms the last three weeks. And looks like he was moving well early in this one. New Orleans needs him healthy and available as Troy Green at the point now. 
with Dowdy on one wing, one dribble back to Green. Myers to set a screen up top for Green, who will go at C, spinning in the paint and scoring. Troy Green can bust the zone with his ability to dribble and finish in the paint. Well, that's a good thing to do against that zone is attack. They try to lull you asleep and make you take outside jump shots. So I'm glad to see Troy Green attack that zone, get in gaps. Long will shoot a three, and they'll stay hot from outside. Bryson Long from downtown on the left, and that's three three balls early for HBU and make it four, actually. Four of seven from deep. They're shooting uncommonly well so far, and up 17 to eight. Now Dowdy going down low, finds Myers, who shares to Jackson for the dunk. I'm glad to see Jackson attack the rim that way because he's a load in there and he's got to be able to win the war at the rim. If you're New Orleans, you're going to try something different and trap here, and they had C in trouble, but the foul was called on Dowdy, got a little too aggressive going for the ball and hit with his first personal and the third team foul for UNO. Anytime there's a trap, though, you can't reach. you got to mirror the basketball and uh, give that guy the pass a, a real tough angle to make a pass to take away vision with your pressure. Lee's inbounds is knocked away intended for Tordoff. Myers from behind doing so, and that ticked the second off the clock. Percent Four of seven from long range, and they've made the only three free throws attempted in this game. Also out-rebounding New Orleans eight to five. Struggled to get it inbounds, but finally did. And setting up the offense, here is the versatile 6-6, Darius Lee, a senior who has really exploded in his final collegiate seniors. He can do a little bit of everything. UNO paying extra attention to him. Goes cross court to C on the dribble. He pulls up and his shot's blocked in his face and it's a shot clock violation. Third time UNO yep. has been able to do that when they've gotten the defense on the perimeter flying around, the shots haven't been there. Very aggressive defense. Got to continue to sustain that effort. If you can continue to do those things, maybe you can hold HBO. HBU to a low percentage. Green will bring it across and pass it to St. Hilaire. Those two senior guards playing catch for a moment. Now Green in the mid-range pulls up and misses. Tapped Good. in, though, crashing in Tyson Jackson. I love seeing Jackson go to the rim. He seemed very determined. He's got to continue to do that the entire time he's out there. But he, both teams, but you and know in particular, they've got to learn to play their best when their best is required. Hoffman pulling up the bounce, nowhere to go with it. Finally, outlet up top to see who gets by Dowdy and dishes down low in the end. A great assist, laying for Tordo. That was a good inside dish by Tordo, by C. C is a very heady uh, combo guard. You got to keep him in front of you, though. On the baseline, an open shot for Myers, but missed from 12. Lee able to clear it. And he can always take it himself and has full liberties to do so. For Ron Cottrell, his 31st season at HBU, he's led them up several divisions. UNO creates a turnover. Jackson finds Green. He'll hang in the air and bank it home. That's when UNO is at their best. When they're in transition, they're running. They've got a fine five-man attack in, in, uh, for 94 feet. Hard to stop. Green and Jackson combining for six for seven from the floor. Six points apiece. UNO, though, trailing 19 to 14 as we near the halfway mark of this opening half. Forsall in the pick and roll picked up by two and having to pass it off. Privateer switching a bit defensively. Now C tries to pass it to the corner, knocked away by Green. Shot clock has dwindled down the three again on the Huskies. Yeah, but UNO's uh, defensively on any ball screen is a hard hedge by their post, which disrupt them reversing basketball. Very good job, and then you got the help side defense uh, covering the roll guy. They're very good defense, and they're talking. They're very active, got active hands. They've got to continue to do that to disrupt offense. HBU needs to shoot in a hurry. Corsalt will do so off the screen and nearly hit the three. Another rebound, but knocked away from Hoffman. Sackey with it for New Orleans. At the free throw line, he pulls things up and brings it to the sideline. Darius Lee on the bench for HBU. That opens some things up potentially. Green passing up the three on the pass out and then threw it away. It wasn't there. Looking for Kirkland as Tordoff stepped in front to pick it off. Now Corsalt passing to the corner. Long looking for another three. And hit one earlier, missed that one. Hoffman kept it alive and couldn't save it. Stolen away by St. Hilaire. 
With four Huskies in front of him, St. Hilaire trying to avoid a trap, and it looks like a reach-in foul will go on HBU, and it will. Long getting a piece of the wrist that time. <laughs> Coach Ron Cottrell couldn't believe that call right in front of his bench. He's an old veteran coach, 31 season there at HBU, and uh, I think that the angle that he has is a little bit different than the officials. St. Hilaire on the baseline with the defender on his back has to dribble out, now crossing over a couple times. He's determined to get there and then winds up throwing it away. Nothing doing as long, a chance on a three on two break, and it hurts you badly because they get an easy layup on the other end for Corsal. Yeah. 21 to 14, HBU. Yeah, HBU with a strong push. Uh, three on, with a three on two that capitalized on the numbers. And you call that another unforced error. A turnover yep. that didn't have to happen. Now Kirkland spins and shoots a brick off the glass. Really tried to bank that in from outside of the lane. And HBU's done a good job on the defensive boards except for Jackson a couple times. Corsalt splits two defenders and scores high off the glass with the right behind because they did so in both games last week and it really cost them in that huge matchup Saturday with A&M Corpus Christi. They got within one point in the final minute. They wound up falling by five in a game they were playing from behind the whole way. They could be in control of their destiny for fourth place and a bye. Instead, they're not. The shot is missed by Saki and on the floor off the foot of a Husky out of bounds. Privateer is fortunate to retain it. Yeah. It's interesting to see Darius Washington, a true freshman big man out of Louisville, playing here in the first half. Usually that's Deontay Bell. Not sure what's going on with the second year privateer big man who's usually the first off the bench in the front court. Now Green in the paint surrounded, passes out. St. Hilaire passed up the long three, will shoot a long two instead. It rattles out, rebound toward off. HBU again clearing the defensive board. Yeah, Bell is sick right now. That's, that's one of the reasons why uh, you've got the rotation. Darius Washington is hitting the floor so early. Uh, but again, UNO's got to send two people back uh, in the defensive transition. Long missed an open three that rattled out on him. Now St. Hilaire in the paint, nowhere to go. Shoots from an awkward angle. Another four shot you didn't need, but the loose ball saved by Saki. This time he can square up and hit a wide open three from the near corner. Yeah, well, he was in the right place at the t right time on that three-point shot, but uh, again, uh, you got to make your stops. He's only two for nine, though, and a lot of those shots have been forced. Now Long missing the floater. Rebound for Washington off the fingertips of Kirkland. St. Hilaire in transition, goes in the paint, throws it up out of control after it was knocked away, and C recovers. C will attack quickly. Up. Will kick to the left wing all day for Hoffman, and almost banked in the three wide open. The rebound for New Orleans. Helter Skelter play, seven minute mark, 23 to 17. Huskies lead the Privateers. Yeah, St. Hilaire's got to get off that floor though once you get knocked down. If not, they got an advantage five on four, so he got to get up. He's hurting his team if he doesn't. This time the banker won't go again too strong. Coach, he may be forcing things a bit. Now two of 11 from the floor. He's got other players on this team that can score the basketball. Yeah, well, he and Green scores 50 percent of the team's offense so i think there's a little bit of pressure to perform tonight especially given the position that uno is in in terms of getting that by hoffman the missing the jump hook over kirkland strong board again by washington green the other way almost for new orleans trailing hbu by six with 616 to go jude young along with the coach tick price with you and Green coming off an uncommon game for him. Swishes the first of two free throws. He's down to 82% on the year, Coach. He was just four of nine on Saturday yeah. at yeah. Northwestern State. Well, you know, when you foul him, it's almost like giving up an easy two-point play because he normally can knock that free throw down. An excellent three-point shooter. Knocked both down there to draw UNO within four in a game. HBU is led by nine on a couple of occasions. Darius Lee back out there and handling the basketball as he'll do often on the perimeter, passing off to Christian Corsal. Corsal wanting a screen from Zach Aiemi, their biggest player in the rotation. Now Z in the corner for three won't go. Myers with the rebound quickly to Saki, who comes across, doesn't see the angle, and passes out to Green. Saki gets it back. He'll launch a three off the back rim. Strong rebound for Dowdy. UNO scores on another offensive putback. Yeah, Dowdy is an energy guy. When he comes in, he normally can make some things happen. And uh, 
you got to make sure that they pay attention to him because once he gets in, there's definitely going to be some hustle plays, guy who can really do a good job. Bell normally is that guy, uh, but right now, Dowd is did a great job in the offensive stick back. Nine second chance points for UNO to just two for HBU, back within two, but Lee able to attack at Myers, who swung at him and tried to block the shot and fouled him down low. Did a lot right there matched up with an all-conference performer, but when you swing at the ball, the official almost always gonna hit you with the whistle. Uh, that's uh, official one-on-one. Anytime you see a swing, uh, if he had went straight up, Maybe not a foul, but with the swing, it's going to be an automatic whistle. And this good play for HBU early with Lee only scoring three and missing a free throw here. Again, that doesn't happen very often for Darius Lee, but he's fifth in the country in steals with 2.4 a game. An yeah. excellent rebounder, one of the best top five in the conference, and scoring the basketball at 17 a game, even higher in league play. And he shoots about 80% from the free throw line. So anytime you see him step to the line, it's almost automatic like Troy Green is. Made that second one every bit of 230 pounds, which you can see he can move and do a little bit of everything. 24-21, New Orleans trails but has the ball. Down low, Myers gets it. Tried to wrap around, and it's stolen away. Another one of those turnovers where UNO will just wonder when they look at film why they do this in the first halves of these last three games. In the post, it goes to Iemi who spins, shoots, and scores. He had deep position over Kirkland and the 6'9 big man out of Cypress, Texas at 250 pounds, a load to handle. Kirkland, though, going right back at him and is fouled on the floor before the shot by well, Iami. With that front line, you don't have to ask where it's to be. So they've got some size inside, and uh, they continue to allow, if you know, continue to allow deep post-ups, it could be a long night for the privateers. The privateers got to shut shut down those deep post ups and force them out a little bit higher. EAME at 250, we mentioned Lee at 230, tore it off at 230, inbounds is stolen, thrown up to half court long, behind the back, Corsalt misses the layup, but Lee gets an easy put back. Another UNO turnover here in the half. It's only six, but they've been costly. HBU yeah. is able to run after each one, and now they're lead back up to seven with 418 to go in the half. Well, that's a great example of a three-on-one. Uh, you know, players didn't get back to half court before they were laying it up. Green left open in the mid-range, hits from 17. He's now four or five from the court. And the first New Orleans player in double figures with 10. 28-23, four-minute mark. As Long cut off on the baseline, dribbles it back out. Two-man game on this side with EAME. He'll roll to the basket wide open. Jackson didn't see it, easy layup. Well, this is a game where UNO has won both meetings between the two teams, uh, the tip-off and also over in Houston. And so uh, UNO has got to make sure they protect home court. In the paint, jump stop, scoop up, will go down, bouncing on the rim three times and in. Troy Green's really the answer with his quickness and physicality. That's what he likes to do in the paint dealing with this zone defense. He's having a great half and keeping UNO in range. Down by five at this juncture. Long will give it up to Lee who passes it right back out to Long for three over St. Hilaire. And it's the fifth tray of the half for HBU and Long second. Give him six, 33-25, under three minutes to go. Yeah, Long is pretty good at setting his feet. Um, he, uh, he has nice form. Good follow through, but you can't allow him to shoot open shot. Dowdy on the handoff goes right to the rim and misses a chippy. Absolute easy layup, and he blew it. Lee will slow things down and set HBU up in the half-court offense, looking for a double-digit lead. He will penetrate. He will muscle up the shot off the glass. Good defense by Green. Rebound by Kirkland. Now St. Hilaire down the far side with Lee on his hip will pull up for three. Another four shot, another miss by St. Hilaire, another clearance for HBU. It's a long far side, into the post quickly, Lee will pass it out. Surprised he didn't go at St. Hilaire there, a tough matchup for New Orleans. Now you were able to pick up properly in the man defense. Corsalt on the dribble, stops at the elbow, passes out another chance for Long to bomb one and hit another, and HBU is bombing UNO into deep, deep trouble. 
Yeah, well, they got a little confidence now shooting those threes. Cheap foul, but shooting. New Orleans at 38%. Troy Green, though, at five of six from the floor. They're both out there with the point guard, Daniel Sackey. Green with it left side. Starting five for UNO, while HBU was hit six from three-point range in the half. Green, a floater in the paint. That one won't go. Strong rebound, Jackson put back, won't go. Trying to get it again and does outside the paint to Kirkland, who fakes, shoots, and misses from point-blank range. Green clears for UNO. Another chance on this end. Offensive rebounds huge for UNO in the half. Green scores it again. Privateers with an 11-2 advantage in second chance points, keeping them in range against the sharpshooting Huskies. One minute coming up to remaining in the half. HBU with the ball, up nine. Corsalt spinning, but nowhere to go. Another screen from Tordoff. Saki stays with him. Long who's red hot, shoots another three and hits. Oh, man. Four He's on deep. fire. Yeah. Four in the half, 12 yeah. points. 12-point UNO deficit. St. Hilaire, well, he's getting beat on both ends of the floor. This is a good pass to Jackson. We'll try to bank it in and does from 15 feet. I don't know if he called it, but it looked pretty. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> think the bank was open this late at night, but uh, you, UNO's got to take it, take it any way they can at this point. Four or five shooting for Jackson. He's got eight points. HBU can't hold for one with eight seconds between shot and game clock, but they're running down the ladder anyway near half court. Corsault gets the screen and gets a chance to sh whip it around the perimeter. Lead of the hole lays it in. Ball movement superb there by HBU as Lee makes his second field goal. Down 12, final five seconds of the half. Here is Green looking to get off a shot. Can he against Tordoff? He does. Will it count? Doesn't matter. It's no seconds on the clock. And with New Orleans emptying the lane, no chance for HBU to do anything if he misses the second. But Green drains the first of two. He's had a huge first half. That is his 15th point. With one more to come. And also in. So New Orleans will be happy to be only down 10. Did or you correct? There's no other choice. I mean, you've got to make sure. Now, if you want to win this ball game, you got to bow your net and show some mental toughness. Long with it, the dangerous shooter who's hit four threes in this game already. Derek St. Hilaire, well aware of that, as Long, who rarely does things off the dribble, will try to here, and he stays hot. He's filling it. That from the mid-range on the baseline right, nothing but net. He's got 14, and they're back up by a dozen, matching their biggest lead. Green, oh, perimeter yeah. right, with 16 points, matched up with Lee. That's one he can win. A lot of contact, no whistle. Rebound out of bounds off of the Huskies. All right, let's see what we're going to run on our OB play. Uh, because right now, there's no openings on those drives. Jackson getting it against Corsault. Should be a great spot for him to score. He misses. He follows his shot, though. Misses again. Keeps it alive to himself. Banks it, it in. Would go. not be denied. Tyson Jackson now with 10 points. I love seeing uh, Tyson being that aggressive. He's got to continue to do that if they plan to get back in this ball game. Now Long looking to drive. Stopped on the baseline. Had to pass it out. Corsault with it. Lefty dribble into the lane. Ducks under and lays it in. Went right at Sackey and beat him off the bounce. Up ahead, St. Hilaire. Nothing doing against this HBU length. He'll have to figure it out offensively. A score normally does. This time a catch and shoot opportunity and can't convert. Corsault able to pull down the rebound. And will trot it into the front court with his team up 45-33 early in the second half. Two-man game up top with Tordoff who rolls to the basket. They don't get it to him. Now fighting for position. He doesn't get it from the wing either. Corsault between the rings will hold and wait for Tordoff again. Ducking under the screen, St. Hilaire. Lee, to me, long with it, will pull up for a contested three this time. There's nothing you can do he about that. He is on fire. I mean, defensively, that was there. They were there. You don't know privateers were there. But he's hit a couple difficult shots, and his confidence is is really on an all-time high. X Factor with five threes and 17 points for HBU. Now Jackson missing in the post, an air ball right to Corsault. UNO down 15 in their home finale. Hoffman gets away with a screen that might have had a little lean into it. Corsault missing the jumper, rebound Jackson. His seventh. 
St. Hilaire will look to attack in transition. A lot of contact, no whistle, and he banks it in anyway. Just his third field goal. Yeah, that was a tough uh, bucket for St. Hilaire. They are definitely, anytime he catches, they, they got people coming at him. But uh, I'm glad to see him being able to finish that, that layup because that was a tough one to finish. Referees letting them play in this one, particularly early in the half. Tore it off, right block. Dribbles into the paint, now spinning back to his right, misses but not to the floor, and fouled by Kirkland. Yeah, the privateers have got to make some stops. They've got to give HBU a lot of credit. Kids are playing hard. They're knocking down shots. They're going to the rim, trying to keep you on their on the heels. And when you help, uh, they're able to, uh, HBU are able to knock down uh, threes, but defensively they are very active on their half court, in, in UNO's half court. Defensively, they're making their stop like they need to. Toward off the senior making his 18th start tonight on the year and averaging 6.6 .6 points per game. Rattles home the first foul shot. He's 65% from the line on the season and the lefty's line drive gets a friendly roll, rim, glass, and in. 50 to 35. Huskies three minutes into the second half. UNO goes high low from way out top and Jackson's fouled on the catch. Pushed back by Tordoff. UNO offensively trying to get it inside from different angles. Coach, defensively, if you were UNO, what would you do to try to change up the look with HBU finding success in different ways now? I probably would tra trap that ball screen uh, also, I might press a little bit more to give him just change of pace, try to disrupt the offense a little bit more. Uh, that's kind of what I would do, but it's easy to say what I'd do over here on the sideline with you. Obviously, uh, wow. Kirkland tied up as he tried to muscle it against the substitute big man EA Emmy and the arrow pointing the way of the Huskies. Yep. Good defense standing his ground, and again, Coach, they're letting him play here in the second half, but it's consistent on both ends. Yeah, well, it's called March Madness. I mean, it's going to be like that from the rest of the season going into the Southland Conference Tournament next week, and you've got to be able to play through some of the contact. I'll stand corrected. They didn't switch the arrow. HBU had it to start the half, so it'll be UNO ball on the baseline with 17 to shoot. Lob outside to Saki. Now Green with it again against this zone. Near side for St. Hilaire. Finds a good pass down low in the middle. Really an incisive bouncer as Kirkland's foul going up with it under the rim. Yeah, well, right now, though, Simeon Kirkland has got to make that a three-point play. Uh, I like to see them throw it up a little bit more to him instead of at his feet. And he's long enough maybe to catch some of those lobs and play above the rim a little bit more. Anytime he take it down, that's a chance he's going to get stripped. Kirkland yet to score and misses the first of two free throws. UNO's third leading score at 8.8 .8 per game. 62% from the stripe this season. The transfer from UAB will convert the second foul shot. But the Privateers down 50 to 36, and they'll apply some pressure man-to-man -man in the backcourt. Corsalt will bring it across the timeline for HBU. Coming near side on the bounce, going behind the back and passing into the corner to Hoffman, one of their dangerous shooters. Green called for the foul coming from behind on the steal attempt as they tried to feed the post to Lee. Yeah, I, I didn't see much contact. If you're going to play, let them play physical, let, it, let them play. But uh, I didn't see anything that warned a whistle on that. But again, they've got the whistle and I'm on the sideline, but I thought we had a pretty good view from our angle. Long pulls up at the free throw line, doesn't get the roll and tapped away from EAME by Kirkland and picked up by Saki, who looks to go coast to coast and he's fouled in the lane. The veteran point guard that time weaving his way into position to try to score it. Yeah. Gets himself to the line on Hoffman's second personal. Yeah, that, that was a collective push, but uh, I think Simi, uh, the privateers have got to continue to attack. Uh, but it costs nothing to think big. You got to cost it costs everything to think small. And uh, right now they're in a good position in the conference to make their run. But it starts tonight because you're going into play tournament play and you want to build some momentum going into that with the right mindset. 
Sackey missing his first free throw. Scoreless on the night so far. Second one up, and he misses that one short, too. Privateers come up empty on the trip and are just one of four at the line here to start the second half and down 14. Corsault finding Hoffman perimeter right. He's looking for long off the screen. They'll go over the top, and it's knocked away intended for EA Emmy. Great defense by Kirkland. Green with the loose ball will go into the front court and get fouled on the reach in outside the arc. HBU really trying to stop UNO's running game. The Privateers can get stops. They're going to keep yeah, running. Yeah. Well, that and HBU keep fouling them. They'll get in the bonus a little bit soon in the second half, which could benefit if they make those free throws. Four fouls in four minutes against the Huskies. Second personal on long. UNO in the half court after the inbound. Jackson mid post left with it, facing up now, putting his back and backing down at EAME, and they call a block, and that's a good half in New Orleans. HBU up 50 to 36 after building their biggest lead of 15 here early in the second half. New Orleans with possession of it in the half court. Troy Green, top of the arc, into the near corner to St. Hilaire, who will dribble out and create space for three. Still can't find the mark. Just two, now three, I should say, of 15 from the floor. HBU in really good position here, coach. A team that was underestimated coming into the season as they battle for a fourth place spot in the Southland Conference. Lee around the screen will go to the corner, tore it off for three, and a spot up shooter knocks it down again for HBU. They're nine of 16 from outside. Hoffman, perfect from three, three for three, as a foul's called in the front court. Yeah, well. Uh, UNO's got to continue to do their best to disrupt offense. Uh, they they can't get up. You can't give HBU open shots. They've got they're knocking down shots right now. Uh, Coach Cottrell has got his team ready to go through their scout, uh, but somehow, some way. Uh, St. Hilaire's got to get going against that matchup zone. Inside 15 minutes ago, St. Hilaire thought about shooting, now doubting himself. Sackey feeds the post, and Kirkland able to bank it in. UNO moved the ball well enough that time. They get a big man a good look. Yeah, well, you got to make this zone shift a little bit. Uh, you can't keep it on one side of the floor. you got to go side to side and try to get it inside out and make them move in that zone a little bit more. EA is a tough load to deal with. He's quick enough to set screens and then roll down low and all Kirkland could do on the catch was grab him. He knew he was beat. EA could make some money on Sundays <laughs> if, uh, if he goes and tries to play a little bit of football. They've got some beef in that, in that post. Uh, but again, UNO has got to continue to prod and take each possession to try to win those ne this next four minutes before this TV timeout. Long, who's been blazing hot. Not a good shot there, but down deep. EAME, who's stepping on the baseline. They finally see it. He had his foot there long enough as he was trying to get in position and turns it over. He's got to watch that big toe. That's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure those big feet part of that football frame. Yeah. HBU's football coach is probably thinking about that. He'd make a pretty good strong side Man. defensive end. <laughs> UNO you down 15 as Green spins and loses it. Now the loose ball winds up off of Corsalt to Jackson. St. Hilaire right side will look to penetrate and lose it again. Went right into EAME and knocked to the court and he's hurt. Get up. Yeah, he's hurt. Long for three on the other end. Misses on his birthday, Jamel Myers with the rebound. St. Hilaire recovering and will get the ball open right corner for three. Still can't find it. Long yeah, rebound, Sackey down low layup. Myers, privateers again with a second chance opportunity and score. And now a stoppage of play. Not sure if it's because of St. Hilaire getting hurt earlier no one he's of the he's talking to jackson talking to jackson at half court is he bleeding is something going on here i'm not sure he might Saint have got the wind knocked out of it maybe i don't yeah. know saint Hilaire definitely got shaken up he'll come out and rodney carson will check in 53 to 40 hbu 1348 remaining carson a junior a pretty good defender off the bench who sparked the uno rally last week although they fell short on saturday at northwestern state He'll be on the ball right now against Corsalt. Carson, the native 
of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but gets crossed over here to the bucket. Can't score over Myers. Good defense. Chance to run for the Privateers. Green, two on two. Hit no whistle, but he scored it anyway off the glass. Talk about letting them play. It's been selective when the fouls have come, but Green now with 18 points. EAME over the top. Can't score it. Again, the help defense by Myers. It goes out of... And the visitors lead the host New Orleans trying to stay in first place in the Southland by 11. It goes to Hoffman who's open for a jumper. He had a foot on the line but missed it anyway. Rebound Carson with St. Hilaire banged up on the bench. Troy Green trying to make things happen. Goes right to the hole and does. He has 20 points on 8 of 11 shooting. An 8-0 New Orleans run over the past two and a half minutes. Yeah, I love the way Troy is attacking. He has not stopped since the game has started. He's got to continue to do that. But uh, Jackson has got to call that high ball screen. Uh, Troy Green cannot afford to get beat up. But those guys are laying wood on those uh, ball screens. And you got to be able to talk and get through those screens. And that allowed Darius Lee to get a layup. Good now cut. down low, Myers misses the layup on the pass from Jackson. The privateers have also been haunted in their last two games and now tonight by missing chippies. That time Myers. Dunks are better than layups, coach, I'll say that. Yeah. But UNO got it to nine, now down 11 in the post. EAM he falls down and New Orleans able to tie him up in the lane. HBU will have it with the arrow with 12 to shoot. They need to clean that slick spot in the lane. A little Nobody surprised they're hurt. not stopping it. Yeah. yeah coach. They're just going to play on. Now the official realizing it, and the mob will come out. HP really good on inbounds of setting screens for their shooters. Tordoff will come in for EAME, who looks okay after hitting the deck pretty hard, but he's a more mobile screener. It'll go right out to Hoffman, who looks to drive, and the reach and foul on Carson. Just the fourth team foul of the half on UNO. Well, one thing... UNO can't win if they retreat. They keep, they've got to continue to battle, uh, stay the course. Uh, but if they look in the mirror, that's, the, that's their competition. HBU's been really good with the basketball in this game. Only six turnovers on the road. Now a lob in the backcourt, a jump ball that Corsault's able to win against Carson. Now a chance to set them up in the half court set. A lot of fancy dribbling. Now gets a step on Carson. Help defense down low, draws the help. Lee behind the back passing for three. It rattles off. Hoffman got a good look. Wouldn't drop. Green with the board. His third. Now he'll look to attack and transition. Muscle his way up and floater wow. in. Tough. Anytime he's picked up by Long, Green's going to go right at him and try to score the rock. Well, Troy Green is playing with uh, determination. He's playing with a desire to win. Uh, they've got to continue to go to him because he's a guy who's capable of carrying his team. A high off the glass, Corsall able to finish over Jackson. Yeah. They're letting some interesting screens go on the perimeter, and the Privateers did their best to defend it. Just a better shot by Corsall. Now facing up Myers, right of the paint. Down low, he has it slapped away, but into the hands of Saki. Saki bounce pass back to Myers, a pump fake. This time able to lay it in off the glass. Yeah, that's the way you protect the brim your body uh, from getting uh, banged up too much, but you got to continue to go to the rim with it, hoping for a three-point play. Green pokes it away from Lee, able to pick it up in the end as Lee couldn't recover and get a layup. He's got Green. 24 points, creating the turnover. Two all-league players go at it, and the New Orleans guard wins that battle. Yeah, Troy Green is playing his hard out today. Just glad to see that every possession matters to him. He's the guy, the heart of a warrior. Uh, the privateers got to continue to fraud and, and keep grinding. But that trap right there should have been a trap on that. Troy Green with 24 points and Tyson Jackson with 10 for UNO. HBU with balanced scoring, four and double figures, led by Bryson Long with 17. He has the ball now and looking to pull the trigger off the screen and shoots an air ball right into the hands of Green. Up ahead, front court, Saki, middle of the court to St. Hilaire, who returns after being shaken up. He gets it back and looks to drive and gets past Corsault, dishes to Kirkland, who's double-teamed, to the Good cutter. Cut. Myers, up and in, the birthday boy scores. 
his third field goal. UNO within five inside 10 minutes to go. Yeah, Jamal said happy birthday to me. Now Lee driving and kicking. Two shooters passing up opportunities. They were pulling the trigger earlier. Now Corsault resetting with two big screeners up top. Going around Tordoff, keeping the bounce. St. Hilaire right with him. To Long, left wing, into the post. Tordoff has it deflected and throws it away. Looking for Hoffman in the far corner. Okay. Uh, UNO is playing with a little fire right now. Got to sustain that effort for the next nine minutes and 25 seconds. Here are the privateers you were hoping HB would pull off a little bit from three. They have, and the defense starting to fly around and make things happen. Chance to make it a one possession game on this trip. St. Hilaire off the screen will launch a three. He finds the mark. He did that. Derek St. Hilaire, his second long ball, now has 10 points. It's a two point game with 9.05 remaining. Now St. Hilaire defensively, Corsault trying to go at him. Oh. And what they've let go in this half, that's an unbelievable call on New Orleans. Yeah, you gotta be more consistent than that. You let the big guys bang on those screens and you can't make that touch foul. Fifth team foul on the Privateers in the half is the second personal on St. Hilaire. Privateers on a 9-0 run over the past 2.30. Corsault up top, slap from behind, loses it, able to recover toward off to Long. Long kicking the Lee, he'll launch a three and a money player hits a huge shot for the Huskies. His first from deep, give him 13 points, give HBU the five point lead again. Now a ball kicked away by Corsault on the sideline into the scorer's table. Just the type of players not afraid to take the big shot as you'd expect, the senior draining the long ball. Big time players make big time plays. Troy Green has been big time in this one. Finding the cutter, Kirkland for the flush with two Troy hands. Green is playing a good floor. He's having a good floor game tonight. Stunningly his first assist, he's been scoring the rock, but he's playing well on both ends. Able to take the screen there and stick with Lee. Will now to try to go inside against the smaller guard. Can't get off the jump hook, but creating a shot in the corner on the ball movement, Hoffman for three. And if you're UNO and you have to double in the paint on Lee, they're going to get open shots. Inside yeah. out, big threes, two in a row. HBU has a lead in this game because they're 11 of 23 from deep. Inside eight minutes to go. Now open, Myers catches down low, puts it up, can't score it, but he's fouled underneath the rim, I believe. Jamel Myers at the line for the Privateers, shooting two as we return to action and hits the first. Myers playing well off the bench on his birthday. Seven points now, along with three rebounds and a couple of assists with a steal. Can make it a four point game, and he does. HBU led by as many as 17 here early in the second half. UNO got it to two at one point. HBU hit a couple of big threes to reestablish a two possession lead. Corsault across the timeline, wants to hand it to Long and can't. St. Hilaire picking up his pressure on the basketball. As Corsall yeah, nowhere to nine. go. Good trap. Back from Corsall uh, gets it from Lee, and now Long shoots a three, and it rattled out. Lee with the rebound, and he stepped out of bounds. They didn't see it, but his save off the floor, the Saki, UNO may benefit from them missing that. The trailers, Myers, slapped away back to Saki. Now the Privateers will set up in the half court. Saki cuts through the defense, passes to the wing, saved on the sideline by St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire will drive into the paint. We'll try to dish it down low, and a risky unnecessary pass has been a problem for him lately to turn it over. HB will slow the pace here and try to get into the half court set. Hoffman near the middle of the court passes to the corner. Lee able to slap it to the floor and dribble it away. He's not so dangerous off the dribble. Hoffman's dangerous from three but misses long board Saki. He'll find Green in transition. Euro step, floater. Troy Green is having himself a yeah. night in his final home game. Yeah, Troy is playing his heart out. Uh, they got to continue to now make their stops. They back is a new ball game at this point. Battled back the Privateers. And a chance here. Down two. Can they come up with the stop? Corsalt says no. HBU has an answer again when the Privateers draw close. Corsault with 13 points. Six minutes to go. HBU 65, New Orleans 61. 
Sackey slowing things up for a moment, looking like he needs to catch his breath. Green right corner, fakes it down low, puts it on the floor, pulls up for the jumper. Missed, Good strong rebound. rebound put back. Simeon yeah. Kirkland. Yeah, Simeon used his length, but he went and got that one, and that's what it's going to take to go ahead and you got to gut this out. You got to do whatever's necessary to secure a victory. If UNO wins, it'll be second chance points that pulled them through. 17 to two, their edge yeah. in that category. Long can't pull the trigger. Hoffman will look to drive. Gives it up to Lee, who muscles to the rim. Tried to scoop it and miss. Rebound on the floor, fighting for it. Sackey able to save it. Kirkland up ahead. On two on one, Myers back. Gets it back, flushes it home. And the privateers tied you. Yeah. It's made a huge difference for him, but that placed the advantage of Troy Green at 6'3", but 225 pounds. A strong young man who can match up. Now in the backcourt, Jade Z, we haven't seen in the second half, a steady point guard in out there along with Corsalt as they take long out of the ball game. Here in New Orleans, you're probably happy to see that. Now Saki pokes it away out of bounds from C with 15 on the shot clock. Well, Troy Green is doing a good job. Everybody's talking about his offense, but defensively, he's drawing the best player for HBU right now. And he's done a good job in Garden League. Tordoff having a hard time handing it off. He doesn't want to do anything that far from the bucket. Z with it, screen. We'll try to pass it cross court. It's deflected and stolen by Myers. The privateer hands in the way to create another turnover. HBU's been good with the ball, but lately the privateer's coming up with loose balls. Chance to take a lead for the first time since two to nothing for New Orleans. Cross yeah. court it goes, Saki to St. Hilaire. He dribbles to the baseline, trying to avoid the double team. Passes to Myers, fumbles, recovers, scores it off the glass. New Orleans leads. That's a good heads up play by St. Hilaire. He's proven, but again, that's a hard screen back there at half court. You gotta tell your teammate it's a screen. Screen right, screen left, go over, go through, but you got to communicate that screen. And then Green bumping into the ball handler is whistled for his third foul. The sixth, the New Orleans team foul, so side out for HBU. Now trailing by two, how do the Huskies respond on the road in a game they controlled for a large portion of it? Nearing the four minute mark, Corsalt gets the switch against Jackson. Can the big man stay with him? So far, so good. They'll go down low against Tordov. Jump hook, too strong. He gets the rebound back and draws the foul. You iced your own shooter. Another to come here as he looks for his fifth point. Bit of a line drive shooter, and that one nestles in for him. HBU will settle for being down one yeah. as New Orleans going with four of their five starters and Jamel Myers has been immense off the bench with 12 points. St. Hilaire, perimeter left, cross court to Saki. It'll go to Green on the far side in front of his bench. He's done this all game, driving draws the foul. Good call. And went chest to chest again in the paint. He knows the contact's coming, but yeah. Green built the handle. This is good as two points. Normally when he goes to the line, Green is pretty dependable at the free throw line. A preseason first team all conference selection. Green tonight with 26 points on 11 of 15 shooting. Tordoff called for his fourth foul on the eighth team foul for HBU, but two foul shots coming to Green, who's four for four at the stripe. First one up and nothing but net like the previous four. Yeah. New Orleans in the midst of a 7-1 run over the last 2.38, and HBU just one of their last five from the field. Green can make it a three-point New Orleans advantage, and he does. Well, Long and Lee are two guys you need to focus your defense on. Corsault will try to handle the pressure from St. Hilaire as he comes across the timeline with 3.25 remaining. Keeping his dribble, slapped away by St. Hilaire. Not able to save it, though, as it'll be out of bounds to the Huskies. Plenty of time on the shot clock to work with, with yeah. 3.19 to go. I love the Privateers' defense, though. They really getting after it. If the Privateers can make this stop and score again, that really puts a lot of pressure on HBU. Bryson Long back on the floor. He can definitely shoot it. Lee can do a lot of things. Now matched up with Jackson, who's going to try to guard him. 
45 feet away. Can't do it. He goes into Myers and loses it, but gets his own rebound, puts it up and in, and one. The reach in, I believe, will be on green, and if so, that's the fourth personal foul for the top scorer in this game with 3.07 left. And a chance to tie the game for Lee at the line. He was determined on that play. Yeah, that's the old-fashioned way. And he drills the foul shot. 80% free throw shooter. 69 all. Lee up to 16 points. Sackey handing off to St. Hilaire. Green lurking on the far side. He's looked for those lanes to penetrate. He finds St. Hilaire straight away. Three, too strong. Big rebound, Sackey. Back out to St. Hilaire. He'll look to drive this time. Again, no whistle as he turned his back to the bucket and couldn't bank it in. He's a slight guard who can finish. We've seen it a bunch of times, but hasn't done well with that tonight. Yeah. HBU can retake the lead as Long will bring it up top. Myers went for the steal. Now UNO has to match up defensively. They can't Hoffman for three, but you don't pay for it. The miss rebounded by St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire into the paint. St. Hilaire hit, finally gets a call and has a chance to put UNO back in the lead at the free throw line with 220 remaining. Boy, I love it when they go down to the wire like this. It's a gut check time. You're going to find out the mental toughness of each both teams. UNO's held HBU to 40% shooting in the second half and shot nearly 60% themselves. Getting it done in what was looking dire for them with 15 minutes left. And the foul goes on toward off. It's his fifth, and he's the first player to foul out of this game. He'll leave with five points, three rebounds, and a pair of steals. And the fans will let him know with the left-right chant. And St. Hilaire will wait at the line as HBU looking to make him think about it a little bit. His first trip to the foul line tonight, St. Hilaire with just 10 points, averages 21 a game but is 82% from the line on the season and needed the rim to be kind to him before dropping in there. Well, St. Hilaire is another excellent free throw shooter. Uh, to foul he or Troy Green is almost automatic too. Second one up and he didn't need the help, nothing but net. 71-69 Privateers. And this one set to go down to the wire in the Southland Conference. Poor Salt. On the dribble, trying to get past St. Hilaire and does, and he's oh. tied up. That looked like a tie ball by Jackson, who can't believe he's called for the foul by the official out top, and you know what it was. They're going to say it's a push from behind on St. Hilaire. And as we look at the replay here, and that didn't happen. I don't know what he thought he saw from behind the play, but that's not what happened there, and it's a break for HBU. as Corsault can tie it at the line. Hasn't been there tonight, but the first one up and in. Started his fifth game of the year, so he's emerged late in the season as a starter for HBU. 70% from the line, but two confident strokes there. We're tied again at 71 all. As the clock will tick inside, two minutes to go at Lakefront Arena. Green far side with it. He's been aggressive against Long on the dribble. He is here, he dishes down low, and Jackson lost it out of bounds. They'll say last touch by HBU with 1.54 to go and 17 to shoot for the Privateers. This next minute and 54 seconds. It belongs to New Orleans. Sackey to trigger it in, baseline left. We'll pass it near half court, the catch by Green. Green will give it up to St. Hilaire with a little bit of a runway to work with against Corsault for the moment. He'll look to drive, he'll get to the hole for the lay-in. Good hey. job in the post there by Myers. Yeah, Green Myers screened him, yeah, that was a good Good screen by Myers. He used his body to shield the shot block inside. New Orleans by two, nearing 90 seconds to go. Corsault on the dribble, misses the scoop high off the glass. Rebound St. Hilaire, who crosses the timeline and slows things up with 1.24 to go. 73-71 in a game New Orleans has to have in the Southland title race. St. Hilaire drives, scoops it up, can't wow. get it to go, but he is fouled by Corsault with 1.14 remaining. Coach, Coach, in the Coach, end. Coach Cottrell over there saying it's the same thing on his end. <laughs> there have been some interesting calls yeah. that have come and haven't come yeah. here. St. Hilaire finally getting 
your conference player of the year S calls here down the stretch. Just five of 20 shooting, but he's at the line where he's two for two. The native of Atlanta, Georgia, sixth year in college basketball, up and in with another to come, and this one's big, can make it a two possession lead for the privateers. Excellent free throw shooter. Uh, you don't need uh, Santa Lara and Green to take over this game, as well as HBO. HBU need to make sure Long uh, have maybe hit a timely three, and Lee maybe uh, make a good offensive move to try to cut back into this lead. But Long the will try to back down against Green, pass it out for the open three, and they hit it as Hoffman squared up with confidence to draw his team within one. Lee creating again, that time from the post. Inside 50 seconds to go, UNO's lead back down to one. And the Privateers aren't playing two for one here. As St. Hilaire's running clock, I don't know if I understand this decision, honestly. Puts more pressure on UNO to convert. Shot clock down to six. Green to St. Hilaire, who will pull up. Leaping leaner won't go. He Ooh, gets the rebound, big. though, and he's tied up. They don't call the jump ball. Now I HBU down one with a chance to win the game as they come into the front court. I thought for sure they'd call the hell ball, and they refused. Now HBU can win it. That's why the risk of what New Orleans did could cost them dearly. Game clock down to six. Jackson's got to get back a little bit more. Stunt. Lee leaves his feet with nowhere to go. Ooh, throws it away. It.